How's it going guys? I'm going to go a over a brief tutorial on how to use the editor in the war game. This is something that hasn't been covered a lot so far, so I'm just going to go over some of the quick basics on how to use it. Whenever you open the editor, it will bring you to a blank palette, just grass. Uh, there's a few different things that you can do from here. You can go to different tabs, the units tab, place any units, catapults, wards. Uh, you can go to the Buildings tab, place various buildings. You can go to Trees, various options again. Uh, the tiles have many of the decorations that are collidable. That means you can't send units past them unless they're flying. And then you have decorations that are insubstantial. You can place them and they do not interact with units at all. To begin with, you want to look at the new section on the bottom right corner. From here, you can pick the size of the map, you can pick the theme, and the starting height level. For this demonstration, let's start with a 75 by 75 world on the Egypt theme, starting at height level 0. Above the new tab button, is the upload button. This is how you'll submit something in the end when it's finished. There's load. You can either load a world from existing files, such as anything that is unlocked. Sea Adventure, Paintball War, Badlands, etc. You can also save the map to your computer instead of uploading it. That way it is private. You can't even play it unless you're loading it in the editor. You can also test your world when it's done. To the left of this section, you have the cliff and ramp options. If you press D, you can raise the cliff. If you press F, you can lower it. If you press S, you can build ramps. Sometimes it is a little bit fin finicky on how it works. Pressing A and clicking any part of the ramp will remove it. In this tutorial, I am not going to go over the graphics section or the data section. You can also see their coordinates listed. You can show the grid. Handy if you're trying to build something symmetrical or plan out how far things are from each other. When you go to place an object down, let's say a wizard, you can change which team it's on by selecting this here. If you want to be neutral, you can place it as a neutral building. It will not be controlled by any player. Uh, to get rid of things, you have to hit the select button and drag, select anything in the box, then press the delete key and it will remove them. Next up is the settings section. In this, you can choose the name of the map, write a description for the map, choose the kind of fog you're going to use. If it's unclicked, it's going to be the standard fog where everything is a little bit darker, but you can still see the dimensions of everything until you have vision over it. If you use dark fog, the train is going to appear black, you will not be able to even see what the map looks like until you explore it. To the right of that, you have the unlocked section. By clicking this, it means anyone can load this map into the editor. It also means that people can copy this map if you so choose it. Uh, you can also select the field for map supply. It can go up to, I believe, 150. Any higher and it will just go back down. Nope, 200 works. 300. So the max is 200 supply. For starting gold, you can put just about any value here. Very useful if you're trying to make a mod, let's say uh, a Barbie map, like wolves versus werewolves, you can choose the starting gold for the wolves and workers. It's very important to note on all situations that the starting gold is universal for all players. This is another special feature in the settings page. Distance to gold mine, right now it's set to 7. 
So if we place a gold mine here and try to place a castle, you'll see we can't place this too close. You see the white line up here? That shows it has to be that far to get to it. Let's change the distance to gold mine down to 3. Now you'll see we can place it almost right next to it. Uh, also for here, you can choose how many players there are. Let's say we have only three players. Let's say we have players two, four, and six. You would go to the player slots for player one, three, and five. Press close for them. For two, four, and six, they're now open and can be anyone. If you notice when I click the drop down menu, there's another option for computer. That means the player has to be a computer, you can't move that uh, component. You can also set which team it is. Let's say player 2 and player 4 are team 1, player 6 is always player 2. That means the two open slots are always going to be fighting this computer. In the AI section, you can either put no AI or the normal AI, or you can submit your own AIs for what you want to run on the map and have that computer play that AI on this. You'll notice there's a circle here, start location. This is a special kind of building. If you place that, it has to be a certain distance from the gold mine. Let's put this back to seven. Helps if I place a gold mine instead of a wolf den. You'll see this can't be placed unless it's the seven tiles away from the gold mine. Same thing with the castle. We're going to hit test here. I'm going to show you what that does. The circle will spawn a castle in the spot with seven Thank workers you, around it. For decorations, you have to be very careful. You can place as many decorations in a single spot as you want, but the more you have, the more lag there's going to be when people open this world and try to play it. As you can see, I can keep placing and placing, and it's just going to keep building up. This is also another interesting point. When you go to select things, it will select things in different layers. It will start with buildings and units on the same tab, so if you draw a box with your mouse and select things, it will select those, it will not select trees, it will not select tiles, and it will not select decorations. So let's delete these for a second. We do it again, now it's only going to select trees and tiles. If you do it one more time, it's going to select those insubstantial things again, these decorations. For this next part, we have an isosceles triangle. These points are equidistant from each other. And what we're going to do here, we're going to make a quick three-person free-for-all. From this design, I'm going to add the gold mines. I'm going to add any extra gold mines off to the sides. And I'm going to add the starting ramps. When I'm done that, I'll show you guys. So, for this next part, as you can see, I got the starts of a map going. There's three bases, one over here, one over here, and one over here. They're about equidistant apart, and in the center is a little island with four mines in it, making it very strong for someone to try to get. Each base has two gold mines, and there's a decent sized gap between the end of the cliff and where the castle's going to start just to stop people from maybe sending catapults over here or mass archers here to try to damage it. It's still possible, it's just a little bit harder to do and this also allows it to be a little bit more defensible. You could put a tower up here, towers over here, uh, 
it's very easy to move troops from down here over to here. I'm probably going to add foliage and other things to separate these areas a little bit more to stop the instant fighting. Same with over here. And this area is probably going to be some sort of dead weight or an extra mine, giving both of these sides a slight advantage. So I'm probably going to have to buff red a little bit. Up here, there's enough room for you to build a castle in the middle if you break in. And if you break these towers, you could build your own towers there. So, we're just about done making the map itself. I moved to where some of these ramps were. Make it a little bit more even spaced, add a little bit more room to stop early harassment. Uh, I also started to add some foliage around the place. This makes it easier to make a wall a little bit. Also reduces the space a little bit, forcing people to expand to other areas if they want to try to be able to build enough things to kill each other. Uh, I added another mine at the base of each end of the different player areas. So either they can choose to expand and have it slightly open to attack, or someone else can choose to expand to it and be in danger of getting attacked from above. Overall, it's going to be a very quick and aggressive map for players to do. Uh, next, I'm going to add a few small decorations from the decoration tab, and we can probably call it finished after that. I just finished doing quite a bit of the decorations. Not too much, you don't want things to appear ugly. Probably have too many of these little rocks everywhere. Gonna go ahead and delete some. You can see as I'm doing this, I keep selecting other things like this rock here. Again, that shows you the different levels of which you can select things. So, uh, that's about most of this done. This is not supposed to be a professional map. It's not supposed to be extremely balanced. This is just for demonstration. Uh, looking around, this area is kind of looking a little bit barren, so why don't we spruce it up a little bit? If ever you see your maps looking a little bit barren, there's always small things you can do to maybe improve it. In this case, I'm going to make a little oasis over here. I'm going to start by putting a little water bulb, placing some water bits down. I'm spacing out intentionally, so it's not the same texture over and over again. It's going to be quite a little bit of water over here. Let's even add some deep. Just gonna add a little bit, make it appear a little bit rounded. You don't want it to look too square. No straight lines when possible. This isn't Minecraft or anything. Then I'm going to look for a nice kind of bank style thing. Make it look like it turned to mud near the water. When placing decorations, you can click and drag to place them, but that creates a lot of instances really quickly, and I want to try to avoid lag when possible. Oasises tend to be full of plants, so let's add some nice lively greens. These can appear as reeds. As you go a little bit further out, there's some dead grass. And I say this is just about all we need. Uh, off camera, I did go to settings. I named the map Tumbleweed FFA. Feel free to play it. I set player 4, 5, and 6 to closed. And I set player 1, 2, and 3 open. So anyone can play. You can make custom teams. I set the 
I'm gonna actually change the max supply to 150. Let's see what shenanigans come up from that. Starting gold will be 300. Standard distance for mine, or for mine to castle is seven. I'm gonna keep that with a little description. So when you finish this, you can either hit save. It's gonna want you to name it. For me, it's coming down here as a download. Uh, or you can hit upload. Once you upload the map, you're going to see if you click My Maps, it's going to appear in here. It's going to appear with some of my other maps I have. And there it is, right there. This is the first part of a multi-part series explaining how to use the editor. Uh, keep an eye out for my next part is going to be about this little data tab right here and all the things that go along with it. Thank you. And I hope you guys take another look at some of my stuff in the future.